How are you doing and how have you been? My name's Taz Asquat and welcome to my basic RimWorld guide for beginners. These guides are basically just the basics to get you on your feet and learning so people that are more advanced, a bit more experienced, you may know all these or you may learn a thing or two. In this video we'll be looking at the first weeks and sort of beyond. You've survived your first day and you've done a brilliant job. I'm putting my thumbs up right now. The first thing we're going to be looking at is getting more supplies. As you can see here and in the last episode, if you haven't seen it, I will link them in the description. But we have our stockpile set up of goodness. Now, if we click on some of these items, for instance steel, it doesn't degenerate. However, if we click on wood, we can clearly see down here 150 out of 150. However, it is deteriorating because it is unroofed. So that is going to be something we are going to sort out straight away. We have got quite a fair bit of wood, so actually we're going to use that to build one of our first structures, which is basically just going to roof and keep everything in here nice and tidy. Two doors just to make sure everyone can get in and out nice and easy. So with all our work priorities still set up from last time, I have to check because it's been a while, we are going to set up some basic tasks. So we are about to use a lot of wood, so we're going to get them cutting wood. So we've got a few trees down here. I'm going to cut a few more. And they're all in our immediate vicinity. So that's nice and easy. We don't have to go too far to be hauling them. What we are also going to do is just check the map for any other resources that the game has X'd. Don't really know why we start like that. I imagine there is a total logical thing but we're just going to look around the map just to make sure we haven't missed anything because it's very easy done once that done we're also going to mine some steel which is another important resource early on here we can see a load of steel so we're going to click the mine button and just highlight the areas as we mine in we'll be able to see more of the steel inside or some other goodness Another material that's really, really important located here is compact machinery. If we see up here, we have 30 components and this is what the compacted machinery gives us. Components are really important to build such things as generators, wind turbines, coolers. We'll get to them in a bit, but important resource. So we'll set up a couple again. We don't want to overload everyone early on. After that, so we've queued that up, we're just going to let the game play just on the first speed we've queued that up the next thing and the most important thing that tricks people up is of course getting food because of our starting scenario we start with survival meals which last the longest and is the better out of all of the scenarios for the food that you get tribal you get food but it runs out very quickly and naked brutality well you're naked so there's no hiding any sausages there so for food, we have sorted out our farming, which is really, really good. So that will be growing and naturally done. If we look at the work tub, we can see that that's prioritized here. So that's going to be the first thing that she gets up to, which is going to be really nice. However, in anticipating that there might be a panic getting food, what we are also going to do is find the harvest tab. And these bushes here, if we click on them, are a berry bush. So they grow, they're just a natural resource that will keep regrowing unless they are burnt down. They might get eaten by the wildlife. So it's good to, you know, get them around. It's also worth noting that this is hill root and this is like your herbal medicines. But we'll get onto that down the line. For start, all we're going to do is basically go around and harvest any of these berry bushes that are right next to us. What we are also going to look at is hunting. So we're going to see if anyone's got hunting set up. And Bowman has, and what a delightful name for what we want him to do. Ah, and Bowman also has a rifle. This is very important that anyone that is set to hunting will not do hunting if they don't have a weapon equipped. A ranged weapon to be precise. No one's going to go out like Rambo with a knife in their mouth and start killing deer. It's just silly. So how do we set up hunting? So... He's got one on here, but he doesn't seem to hunt. So what we need to do is go down to the wildlife tab and this load of information comes up. Don't panic. So the first X is basically you tick on any creature that you want to send your people to hunt. The second one is if you want to tame and you can get them animals as pets. 
we will address that down the line. For now, don't worry. This is the one that's really important, the percentages here. The percentages that they give here is the chance that this animal may fight back. So as we can see, the wild boar has a 0.5 chance that it may attack on being shot. If it is in a group, the whole group may attack you as well. So it's very, very important to know. Predators don't hunt, just avoid. The only things that you want to avoid are predators that are, normally have this little icon. So we've got a grizzly bear and a lynx and boomalopes. There's boomalopes, boomer rats. Don't bother with all them sort of stuff. In one of my playthroughs, one of them naturally died and we still tried to um, butcher and everything got blown up. Just ignore. They do have a very good purpose late game or mid game you can argue, but we will address that later on. What we can see here is the wildlife in this affinity that won't attack is turkeys, hares and rats. So turkeys are going to give us the most meat, so we're going to set two to be hunted. So when Bowman gets up, first thing he's going to do is hunt. So he's going to go from left to right on priorities, nothing to put out on fire, no patience, doesn't need to beg bed rest because he's not injured, that's basically just if he's injured. Basic is just turning switches, which is down the line, and so he's going to straight away hunt, which is going to be lovely. Now I hear you say, is you've got all that set up, but where are they going to put them? Because if they put them in here, because it's not refrigerated, it will degenerate. And then you're in the same problem that you were in a moment ago. So what we are going to do is build a very, very small freezer. So we're going to do something very basic. We are going to build something like this. The reason why we've done this is because you want to create a sort of airlock. This is not the most efficient. This is just something really basic just to get you started on your adventure. What we're going to do then is just put one cooler in, which requires a space in the wall. So that wall gets deleted and a cooler gets put in. Of course, we have no power for this cooler. So we're going to go power. Now, if you go wood fire generator, you will have to cut wood as you go. Fueling the wood, if you want your colonists to do that automatically, you need to make sure the whole skill is one or is a very high priority because that will be the skill they need to refuel it. So if I left it like this, I would have to manually click on that generator each time I wanted to refuel it. However, what we are going to do is we are going to build a wind turbine. So again, there are more optimal ways to put it. A lot of people on their farms like to do it like this. I think we'll actually do it like that, you know? And you want to make sure it's not near cliffs because if that, that will block the airflow. So it generally shows you whoop, in the area that it needs clean, which is an optimal place to put a farm. Perfect. So as you can see, our freezer is beginning to be built. So what we also need to do is make sure our power conduit is going from our wind turbine to our cooler to make sure we give it power. We're also going to put another stockpile within this freezer to let everyone know to not put the turkey in here, but to put it in here. How do we do that? So we click this storage button here. I'm going to clear it all just because it's easier for me just to see everything. So we want everything unticked apart from allow fresh. We're going to put priority high uh, preferred because as we see this stockpile, if we put that to normal, if there is any copy, so for instance, this has allow fresh, this has allow fresh. Because this priority is higher than this one, it will automatically go here first. Once this is full up, it will go there. So we are going to basically tick all the meals, allow fresh, we don't want rotten, corpses, animal corpses. So all animal corpses will go in here and all meals will go in here, which means they will be refrigerated. Once they build the walls, then they will automatically roof the area. If you are concerned that, hang on, a roof hasn't gone up, we come into this one here, we come into this one here and we build a roof area. And then your characters will automatically build a roof over that. If you're not sure if there's a roof area, you hover your mouth over the room in question. 
Look over to the bottom right hand side and it will say indoors and it will give you the degree to the temperature of what that room is, which is important for not only the freezer, but making sure your colonists are not too hot, not too cold, but we will address that at another time. But keeping an eye on the temperature of the freezer is important because that one cooler might not be able to do the job. As well as if this wind turbine cuts down because for whatever reason there's no wind, the cooler will not be given the electric that it needs to be able to function. Later on you can research stuff like batteries to help around this, but we won't be addressing that yet. So as you can see, everyone is getting on just fantastic. And now the cooler is built, so we want to click on this cooler. Currently the cooler is trying to keep everything to 21 degrees, which is not good for a fridge. Now there is a lot of to and fro, you'll watch countless videos that tell you this is the ideal temperature and this is the ideal temperature. Some people say to build a fridge and keep it a certain, to me, Anything lower than zero degrees is going to do you to start with. When you're trying to be a bit more efficient down the line, you can try all sorts of fancy dancy stuff. So we are going to keep it below, let's say, minus 20. And that will do us fine. What we also want to do is make sure we've got a pet here and we want to make sure he's not coming into the fridge and eating all our food as he'll eat some of these prepared meals, which actually are really important and give a lot of good benefits for eating. If our colonists eat raw food, they will get a decrease to their mood, which we really don't want. So as we can see, we are just waiting for this to be built. We can even click on the building to see the progress. So we need this much more steel, this many more components. Although Burton looks like she knows what she's doing around a wind turbine. The next step is to get a dining room table because if we click on any of our people, we can quite clearly see they get a minus three because they didn't eat with a table. If you've been in any of the RimWorld Reddits or Facebook groups, then you'll know this is a meme. So what we are going to do is we are going to build them a very simple dining room table. We only have three people, so we don't have to worry too much at the start. Just a simple stool and a table will do. Also, if we check their needs, we can see they slept in the cold, and although it's not here, they will get a negative modifier for being in the dark. So we're just gonna put a torch in. You know, hopefully they'll lighten up. As we can see, the wind turbine is up and we can see through that little bar there how much wind it's generating. We can see that our cooler is powered because when it isn't, you have that little electric lightning bolt icon above it that it did earlier. So as we can see, it is pumping to minus 20 or trying to go there. If we hover our mouse over the room, we can see on the right hand corner, the room is indoors and currently minus five. It just jumped to brilliant. Anything under zero is going to be brilliant because it's going to freeze. If you also want to double check, if I click on one of the turkeys, it's frozen, won't spoil. Package survival meals. I think these never go out of date from the look of it, otherwise it'd give you that little bit down there, which is lovely. We're also going to have to set up a few more things for our food empire. We're going to set up a butcher table. We're going to do it outside and as we do it, it's going to say we have a work speed penalty. Now, later on you don't want this, however you don't want your butcher table in your kitchen. I know that sounds like you would, however the butcher table you're going to get a lot of blood on the floor where you butcher things. We've got the turkey carcass, just need to butcher it. A lot of blood, a lot of turkey skin. So the best way is to either just put it outside, just for the time being, or to create its own little room. Because if we put that butcher table in here, Every time someone came in here, they'd moan. They'd be like, there's blood on the floor. And rightly so. That's disgusting. So you want to keep it in an area where if people walk by it, they're not going to get miserable because then they get negative moods. And as you can see, the lower this mood goes, the more chance they have of having a breakdown and then funky stuff can happen. We won't worry about for the time being because you're doing great. 
And it's wonderful that we're all sitting down and socialising around a table. Talking about socialising, we want to make sure we have some recreation so everyone can, you know, max and relax. So we're just going to put a simple horse shoe pin just for the time being. Used to play that as a kid, very fun. As we can see here, we've got two stockpiles. It's confusing everyone. What's going on? I totally did this on purpose. So what we are going to do is we are going to expand our stockpile. As you play this more and more, this will be a constant theme of you expanding stockpiles, making sure you've got everything you have. And at the end of the day, don't we all love the loot? So what we're going to do is on the architect button, on any of these buttons, we can see there is a deconstruct. We highlight the wall that we want deconstruct. Say we make a mistake. Oh no, we don't want that. We just click cancel. Then we are going to build some more walls here. Maybe another door to make it easy peasy for people to come in. And that's all we have to do. When the wall comes down, all we will do is delete this stockpile, or one of them, and then expand it down. Nice and easy. Because they were sleeping, remember, we can always up the speed. So we will go on speed free, which is very, very quick. You can hit the pause or space bar in case something happens. And as you can see, she's woken up and she is taking full access of this table. Really nice setup so far. Now the butcher table just got built, we are going to click on it to basically make sure people are butchering. Again, we've got the turkey carcass here. We need to make sure it's butchering and just building a butcher's table is not enough. We click the butcher's table and go into bills. Click add bill and make kibble, that's for your animals. Don't worry about that yet unless you want to get exotic very quickly. We're going to butcher creature. Again, it depends how you want to do this. How I always do it in all of my let's plays is I just do forever. Whenever there is a turkey carcass in here, I just want you to cut it. And as long as you have someone number one cooking, they will straight away go and do it. And then that will get put into the meat that you need to make meals, which is the next thing we're going to build. We're going to go to production. We're going to go electric stove because we do have We do have electric coming from the wind turbine. We're going to expand our stockpile to come all the way up here. Again, you're going to need this very much bigger, but it's always better to start small. Make sure no one's over encumbered with the amount of jobs you're trying to make them do, because they will do them in order to when you set them. So you need to just make sure you don't give them a thousand things to do. And again, if we click on the electric stove, we can see what is needed. And in case you're wondering why this is like this at the top, it's basically just drop down stuff. If you click this icon in the bottom right hand corner, it just categorizes everything. So it depends what you prefer. I prefer this just because I generally know what's in there and it's easy enough to check in case you want to. As you can see, our pet is coming into our freezer, which, and now he's eating our foods. So we're going to set up a little zone for him. So we go zone, and we want to manage zone. So we are going to call this one, uh, don't eat my food. You can probably set it up as pet or something that makes more sense. We're going to put him all up here and down here. So hopefully he'll be grazing. What would be another good idea is to set up another little growing zone and put hay grass for him to eat. He might get hungry and if he does, we might just change his zone again. So we go into animals, kip a yak, don't eat my food. As you'll see, he'll run straight to that zone and never move. The game will warn you on the right hand side if he's getting starvation. Because there is no food in that area at the moment and hay grass will take a while to grow, he might get starved. If he does, I'll just, I'll just unrestrict him to either home or unrestrict. So then he'll come into the fridge and get some food. As we can see here, this is the electrical icon. That means there's no power coming down, which is the problem you can get with wind turbines. We will sort the stockpile out here, so we will delete this one. 
we will double click and then expand and there we go. What we will also do is mine that little section or deconstruct because it's bothering me. I've got OCD, live with it. Last but not final, for RimWorld at least, is a research bench. Research benches are really, really important. We'll also put a lamp in here because otherwise people will be in the dark and they'll get a negative mood modifier for it. We want to get a research because if we click this research tab, the green bits are the ones that we've already got. Depending on your starting uh, scenario, you may have more, you may have less. But as we can see, this is very extensive and gives us a lot more things to access. For example, once we know how to do gunsmithing, we can then build these guns, which is, as I'm sure you would be aware, very, very important. You gotta get the gun show out. We will also make sure that we are collecting supplies as it's easy to forget that we will need more wood to fuel our torches and we'll just make sure, oh, hasn't been done yet. We have an animal over here which is a predator, is currently unconscious. If we look at his health, he will die in 18 hours. So it's worth keeping an eye on that because the game will automatically give it a red X which means no one will haul it. However, that's free meat. And we like meat. Now the research bench is up and this is where the game gets hilarious fun. So we can pick whatever direction we're going to go in. There's sort of an argument for anything, but we're going to do batteries as we found that wind turbine on its own does cut out at certain points because there's no wind. So we're going to research batteries. In order to make someone go and do that, we're going to have to make sure this research tab is high up. So we're going to put Bowman on a one. So his priority is going to be to hunt. And if there are no hunting jobs, he will come and sit on this research bench like so. He's a good boy. What you then do is we will just put it on speed three as you will see the research bar starts to go up through this blue line. Once it reaches the end, you will get an acknowledgement on the center of your screen saying, congratulations, your research is complete. You then either set up another research or maybe we want Bowman to haul, so we won't put him on research. It's very important to make sure that the work schedule changes as and when you need it. Areas you may want to haul because you've got a lot of steel up here. So push research down, push haul up. Feel free to experiment, see what works best for you. Just make sure there's always a cook. So what we are going to do, we are going to get a battery room ready. We want our batteries to be inside to make sure they're not getting damaged through the rain. So we are going to build a very simple room just here because I think that would be lovely. We will build a room just there. So basically, if there is any excess power, they will then go into the batteries. This is also another important thing. As we can see down here, it says one colonist is idle. Also, you can see by this clock icon up here. If we go to her work, basically she hasn't got anything to do. So we can either give her more tasks on this bar or make sure that we've got growing or plant cutting to do. What we will do is we will add mining. So if she's really bored, she'll mine after everything else. And we will just set up a few more orders just to make sure she's not getting bored. We want to make sure they're earning their food. So we will mine a few more steel and some machinery here. Again, you can click on anything to see what it is. Plus steel is a really good material, but we won't want to worry about that early game. We have seen that our kitchen is up or the stove is up at least. Again, like the butcher table, we need to go into bills, add bill, and then pick the meal that we want. Simple meal, you only need one thing. Fine meal, you need two things and certain amount of levels to be able to do it as well. You can always hit these icons and they always tell you what you need. That many ingredients and that many vegetables. So we want simple meals. We are going to set, we don't want this to do forever because we want to make sure our cook is doing other things. So I really like doing do until you have a certain number. We've got three, so let's say do until you have 12. So that's four meals, which can last a couple of days, not 112, that's a bit too much. And then what we want to do is at a certain number, we want you to unpause. 
So we will say five. So the cook will cook until we have 12 meals and will not cook again until it drops below five or at five. It sort of says it there, so my mistake. You can also click here to make sure what meat you want, what meat you don't want. Human meat is automatically X'd. If you are playing as cannibals, then you might want to tick that. But be aware if one of your characters doesn't like eating meat, they will get very miserable because you don't want to eat your nan. And then we can see there Burton goes straight to it because it is number one on her task. We can also see, and this is a possibility, the wild animals can become tame. Now we've got a boomalope, which I did say about we don't want to hunt because these sacks on their back are explosive, as we see here, milk fullness. And it'll be very interesting what they give us. Again, we want to make sure that you're in don't eat my food to make sure they're in that zone. So we want to be careful. There are numerous things people use these for. You can milk them for their lovely resources. Or what people do is train them to attack invaders because they will then blow up. And there we go. Congratulations. You've researched your first thing on RimWorld. We've got batteries. You can click the research uh, screen here, but be aware your colonists are still moving around while it's on this screen. So what do we want next? The world is our oyster and we can do whatever we want. I think we're going to do smithing, not because it unlocks much in itself, but it gets us to a machining, and this is where the fun is. You can also do solar panels, which are solar panels. In the day, they will absorb the rays of light from the sun and power your base. I'm not saying smithing is the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. There are lots of things that you can try out and find what works for you. However, do be aware that the game is progressing as you get more rich, as in your base, more colonists, the game will attack you with more and more people. So don't be too relaxed on the research. Get it done early. Then we are going to just make sure we've got batteries. We're probably going to go a bit OTT with batteries, but we're going to build four of them. We're going to make sure our power conduit is going down the bottom. That's probably a bit too much, but we want to make sure it's all connected. Again, this is a very basic guide for setting up electric. You can be a lot more efficient and fancy dancing. Just make sure your power conduits are always up. If you've got to this part of the video, feel free to leave a comment of what you would like me to cover or other tips you think I've missed. Like and sub for more of my beautiful voice. And I shall see you next time. Bye.